Now imagine reaching your retirement only to find out that your state pension is far less than you had expected. Now that was my own personal story until I discovered how to fix it. Now I was facing a state pension shortfall due to missing national insurance contributions after working outside of the UK for a number of years when I was younger. But I didn't let that hold me back. I embarked on a journey to uncover the secrets of boosting my state pension. And in this video, I'm going to share exactly what I did so you can do exactly the same. I'm going to outline the process for you, the forms to complete, the telephone numbers to call, and we're going to explain some of the terms that you're gonna come across so you can keep on track and not give up. I managed to buy back enough missing years that will provide me with an extra secure guaranteed and inflation protected income throughout my retirement. If you're worried about your state pension gaps and any missing years that you might have on your record, stick around to the end of the video. I'm gonna break down exactly how I generated a 38,000 pound boost to my personal pension income. This video could be the key to securing the type of retirement and the standard of living they've worked so hard to deserve. Welcome back to the personal finance crew. And if this is your first time, a very warm welcome to the Economies channel, where together we're gonna to be learning the language of money and wealth. And here we're also dedicated to mastering money and making financial wisdom available to all. My name is Simon and I'm a chartered financial planner, normally based in the UK, but I'm recording this video on our reef terrace in the enchanting island of Ibiza. Now this video content was actually requested by Rafa in the comments section. Now I hope you're watching Rafa as this video is dedicated to you. Now I think not just myself, but my camera and the microphone are beginning to melt up here. So I'm going to go downstairs to the air conditioning studio. See you in a minute. <sighs> that is a lot better. Now in a previous video on the state pension, we had a lot of comments, about 1100 and we are still counting. And many of the comments stated that the state pension was a right and not a benefit. Now, whilst it's fair to consider that the state pension is a right based on our contributions throughout our working lifetime, it was actually legally defined as a benefit under the Social Security and Benefits Act in 1992. This means that the state pension needs to be claimed as with any other benefit in the Social Security network. It also means that the benefit can be changed over time and that the eligibility criteria to qualify for the benefit may also change over time. For example, not so long ago, women could claim the state pension at age 60 and men could claim it from age 65. Then the state retirement age was then equalized and both men and women could claim the state pension when they reached age 65. The state pension was then increased to the current age of 66 and this is scheduled to be increased yet further to age 67 and that's expected to be phased in from 2026 to 2028. And the state pension age is expected to increase yet further to age 68. And the Cridland Review suggests that this could be phased in from 2037 to 2039. That's in just 13 years. Now the single tier state pension came into effect in April 2016, and that changed the eligibility rules to qualify for the state pension. You now needed a minimum of 10 qualifying years to get any state pension at all, and you needed 35 qualifying years for the maximum state pension, which is currently £221.20 per week, which is paid four weekly in arrears. And if you've got fewer qualifying years than this, your state pension will be proportionally reduced. But what if you discover that you've got gaps or missing years in your national insurance record? Well, you're gonna to need to follow the link on screen to check your state pension forecast. I tried this online myself, but the system initially did not recognize any of the ID that I provided, either my driving license or my passport. So I followed the instructions online and downloaded the Government UK ID app. I then needed to scan my face using the app, which uses a lot of bright flashing colors. So be careful if that might trigger any sort of reaction with you. I then had to put my phone on top of my passport and scan both my photograph and the passport chip as well. Now this only took a few minutes and a bit of faffing about as well, but ultimately it was successful and then I could continue and view my national insurance record online. Now this is what I found. 
and there was a state pension shortfall which was to be expected as I've worked outside the UK for many years when I was younger. Now you can usually only pay for gaps in your national insurance record going back six tax years. But due to overwhelming demand and unsurprisingly IT issues, the deadline for paying for missing years from 2006 to when the new state pension was introduced in 2016, that has been extended to the 5th of April, 2025. That means you can buy up to 10 missing years to make up for gaps in your national insurance record, but you've only got until the deadline. So put the date of the 5th of April, 2025 in your diary because the clock is most definitely ticking. My national insurance record showed that I had in fact seven gaps or missing years which I was allowed to then buy back. Now the current cost in this tax year of a voluntary class three national insurance contribution is currently 17 pounds and 45 pence a week or 907 pounds and 45 pence to buy back each missing year. Now you need to consider this as an investment in your future retirement income as you will make this back in a few short years. In this example, the cost for me to buy back my missing years the cost was £824.20 and that's because I'm buying back years from 2006 to 2012 when the cost of buying national insurance was at a lower rate. Now in turn, this is going to provide me with an extra income in retirement of £5.82 per week or £302.64 per year and that will of course will increase by the triple lock mechanism. Now this represents very good value indeed because I've got a projected retirement journey of at least 18 years to the average life expectancy of age 85. Now you can contact the Future Pension Centre to find out if you can pay for your missing years in your national insurance record and I'll put the number on screen. Now if you find this video useful, please give it a thumbs up and hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. About 95% of the people who watch our channel and our videos have not subscribed. So please subscribe so you don't miss any valuable future content which we send out weekly. So turn your phone or your tablet sideways so you can see the video better and then hit the notification bell. And this is gonna allow us to get this financial wisdom to as wide an audience as possible. Now this video is being recorded on the 4th of July and the voting in the UK general election is already in full swing. I'm gonna be recording a special election video next week where I'm gonna be highlighting the economic manifesto and of course what changes are planned and in store for all of us in the next five years. I'm gonna be covering personal taxes, investing, pensions, capital gains tax, inheritance tax, and of course, the state pension. Now, with changes like this, there's always going to be winners and there's always going to be losers. So make sure that you hit that notification bell as this is one video you're not going to want to miss. And remember, this is your channel and this is your voice. So if you have experienced any financial problems that you think may help others with their pain points, just let us know in the comments below and then we can all learn together. Now, there are many reasons why you may have gaps in your national insurance record. For example, you could have been living and working outside the UK as I was. You might have been employed on a low income or you might have even been working part time. And that's the case, you may not have qualified for that particular year. You might have been caring for a family member or you might have even been bringing up a family and not claiming child benefit. Now it's worth mentioning that if you were contracted out of SERPs, the state earnings related pension scheme, you would have paid lower national insurance and then had some of that national insurance rebated back into your pension. So you might see the words COPE, COPE, on your state pension forecast, and that stands for the contracted out pension equivalent. This means that you might need more than 35 years to qualify for the maximum state pension. Now the COPE amount is an estimation or a projection of what your additional contracted out benefits could be worth. And it's worthwhile mentioning that the state pension is not reduced by the COPE amount. And that's a question I get an awful lot. So in conclusion, get your state pension forecast, Check if there are any gaps or missing years in your record. Decide how many you want to buy by the deadline of the 5th of April, 2025. 
and then contact HMRC on the numbers that I've provided in this video. And just in case you're wondering, here's how I calculated how I created and generated an extra £38,000 boost to my pension. As you saw earlier in the video, I had the ability to buy back seven additional years and each year cost me £824.20, making a grand total of £5,769.40. Now in total, that's going to provide me with an extra £2,118.48 per year, and that's going to be paid for a projected average retirement journey of 18 years. That's from age 67 to the average life expectancy of 85. And that grand total then comes to £38,132.64. And that's before any inflation increases over time. So thank you for your time and also for your patience as always. And we'll look forward to seeing you next week with a special election video. Now in the meantime, please watch this video about how a means-tested state pension could derail your retirement forever. Mm -hmm.